My next guest has a very serious life. He writes books and articles. <laughs> oh, let me finish. Let me finish. He writes books and articles about toys. And now John Marshall has two new books. It's a, it's a double header. Mm -hmm. One of them is called Collecting Monster Toys, mm -hmm. and the other comic book, Hero Toys, mm -hmm. which are two separate categories. Mm -hmm. And the books are almost like catalogs, aren't they, John? Mm -hmm. In a way, they are. Uh, they're almost like auction catalogs, because everything is laid out so beautifully, and you can see everything so clearly. Other than being stunted, what got you interested in this in the first place? I mean, every kid loves toys, but well, I, I must say most of us kind of put it aside when we get a little bit bigger. Well, I did too. I mean, I, I got to be 13, 14 years yeah. old. I discovered girls, things like that, and, and that didn't pan Boy out. Boy toys, right? Yeah, <laughs> that didn't pan out, so I went back to regular toys again. When I was a freshman in college, I started to get this itch, this urge, and I would sneak out to Toys R Us, like Saturday nights in college. Everybody else would be out drinking, partying. I would be at Toys R Us. What did your friends say to you about that? Well, I only associate with other loser geeks oh, like myself. I, I so maybe they, they suggested to you that you seek a little treatment. No, no, now, too late, far too well, late. Well, we knew you were going to be on the show. We asked a couple of folks here who work here at News 12 New Jersey to bring in some of the stuff they have oh. and that they would like to know uh, what they were. Fantastic, a little appraisal like I'll be doing on Saturday okay, at Barnes & Noble. Here, here we have, uh, obviously, an action uh, figure of uh, one of the World Wrestling mm -hmm. Federation. Randy, guns. Randy Macho Man Randy Savage Macho is Man Savage. obviously one of the Hasbro figures yeah. from the early 90s. See, Randy, his eyes move, and, but unfortunately his mouth does not in this particular type. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, that, what's a little uh, piece of plastic like that? Well, you know, the, um, the funny thing about stuff from the 90s especially is, is that you've, uh, you've got to look for those certain ones. When something's only five, six, seven years old, yeah. um, there are always those one out of every eight or ten that for some reason they didn't make a lot of them, or the character wasn't so popular when the figure was made. Yeah. And so then, and then mm -hmm. so then that's what becomes popular. I mean, this is a five, six, seven, eight bucks right now, yeah. but it's he's a popular character, so it'll just escalate as no. time goes on. Anything Star Wars, the number one people thing that people ask me is that's a Wookiee. That, that is a Wookiee. It's <laughs> yes. a hell of a Wookiee, all right. Yeah. The number one thing people ask me is, what should I invest in? What should I, what is new today that I should buy? Yeah. And the bottom line that's is... That's readily available. Don't buy anything popular. Because it's the stuff, if you look historically, it is the stuff that's left behind. It is the also-rans. It is the me-toos. It is the wannabes. It is the second, third place contenders that people pay the money for. If you want a Star Wars figure, you have your pick. Well, that's the old theory of you don't want to see yourself coming up the street in, in, in you know, your car. You want a car that's a little bit different. And, and now here we have, well, this one's got to be a little older. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, really? Uh, that PVC figure, I didn't check the date on it, but Gilligan's, what, maybe from early 90s there? Really? Because uh, classic TV shows are always popular, and they are always merchandised. And they're and always running on some stations Yeah, somewhere. with Nickelodeon, yeah. Nick at Night, and all that stuff, I mean, all the time. The, it's still, I mean, what's in prime time? You've got Hogan's Heroes yep. every night on Nick at Night, right? It's a perfect example. TV and Land. I never did figure out how he died. No, uh. no, big mystery. Okay, we had the original Batgirl on the program uh, last week. Now, uh, Craig. here is his Batman himself personally. That's probably from 1989 when the movie came out. Yeah. Um, there was so much merchandise. Again, you've got to, if you're investing, you've got to avoid the mainstream. The mass-produced stuff. There was so much Batman stuff. I mean, that's a nice button, yeah. but it is not worth any more today than it was when it was new. Wow. I, and Randy's not going to be happy to hear that. <laughs> now, the, these these are older characters. I don't know how old these little uh, I the toys are. I couldn't read the copyright date when I was sitting over on the sidelines there. Now, is that Crazy Cat? That's Felix the Cat. That's Felix the Cat. The wonderful, wonderful cat. Th th there were two wonderful cats in the comics. Right, right. Crazy right. Cat and crazy Felix cat. the Cat. Right, right exactly. And, uh, I can't read the copyright date. Well, either. Felix is another example, like Gilligan, of a perennially popular yeah. character. Now, Felix hasn't had a lot of exposure in terms of new things going on, but he's so well known. He's an icon, and, and things like that are always popular. Uh, uh, who the hell is that? I think that's Barney Rubble. <laughs> is it really? It's <laughs> not an excellent likeness. No, not really. <laughs> so that will be a quarter for the next 10 years or so. 25 whole cents. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. breaking Probably around. retailed for three or four bucks. But this last Randy's thing, hard. this last thing that Dave DeVita brought us, this thing on the end Oh, yeah, here. right. Oh, we'll get to that right now. Yes. This is in its original package. That makes it more valuable? Well, absolutely, it does. It's all condition. Condition, condition, condition. I say it over and over again. Now, this He-Man figure, you'll notice, is in several languages. This is a European version. Yeah, on the so, back as well, yeah. Exactly. Masters of the Universe, Personnage de Exactly. May we. So that's exactly why 
things like this are not as valuable as the original American versions to Americans. Yeah. Where this might be seventy-five to hundred dollars on the original card, this would run uh, about half that at this point in time. And this one, uh, it has instructions on the back that if you twist the waist, he throws a punch. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's a, it's also an action figure. It certainly is. It's one of the great legendary action figures. I assume some of the things that you brought along with you tonight are a little more valuable than these. No, actually, Can just I the opposite. That? No, oh, just the opposite. You brought, again, because you brought trash. You brought well, I didn't bring. I didn't bring two and three dollar trash. I brought fifteen and twenty dollar trash. Oh, okay. Because one of the things I wanted to talk about, what eBay has made possible, is the whole world can see everything you've got. Yes. Things that, for an investment point of view, burlesque made that popular a very long time. Exactly. Ago. Exactly. And if things you would have passed up a few years ago, people want. You know, if you're investing in something that's fifty dollars and you're trying to get seventy-five yeah. for it, like a GI Joe doll, it's not that easy. I mean, you'll get your 60 or big, big, big deal, $10 profit on a $50 investment. But things that you buy for a quarter, a dollar, $2 at a flea market will go for $17, $20, $25 a piece. So that's a big profit. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back in the toy box. Walk away. <laughs>